Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. A family feud turned brutal in Chasse Babano on Saturday the 29th of June. One relative speaks to Hot 7 News and clears the air on the rumor of land dispute. Rather, she says, something more sinister lies at the root of the disturbance. Solange Alfred tells us more. Chasse Babono was a location where a recent chopping occurred, supposedly over a land dispute among relatives. Reaching out to one relative of the involved family, she denied the land dispute rumor and says the problem is one that is deeply rooted in mischief and malice on the part of her sister towards her brother. All of us, we have 10 of us. All of us have our houses apart from the last one. He's Nikos. He, he's the only one living in the house and my brother from Matnik. When he comes down, he stays in the house. We don't have nothing to do with that, but he, she, she's behind my brother all the time. The last time, she sent dog in the balcony. After she went, she sent a dead cat in the house, and I was the one who went and took out the dead cat in the house, and I talked to her. I talked to her about it, okay? It's about, I think my brother has sent two lawyers' letters for both of them. Once she came on the road by my house, and she kneeled down and she told me, she has to kill Nikos. She has to kill him. She cried and she tell me she will kill Nikos. I tell her why she, was, why she provoked in Nikos' life like that. She tell me, I tell you, I have to kill Nikos. I have to kill Nikos. The husband self, every time my brother passing, going to the shop, my brother come in and tell me, you have to warn the guy. Because every time that I only call him, um, look at the passing, look at the boy passing. And the guys that reach there with him, laughing at him. I say, okay, I will warn him. From her description, the dispute involved a brother, sister, husband, and daughter, with the husband and daughter ultimately finding themselves on the receiving end of a dangerous weapon. The now viral video showing the scene which occurred on Saturday 29th June is both graphic and frightening. As our source tells us, the liquid sprayed on the family members at the start of the video was gasoline and through the scuffle which ensued, the lighting agent was misplaced, preventing the burning of several individuals. The husband is in the hospital because he ended up taking gas when the dispute sat and sin on the people. It's a lot going on and it's she that bringing all the problem. She is the one causing all the problem. And today or tomorrow, anybody can tell you about her in the area. You're making a survey on us in the area of Sasse. People will tell you she's not no good woman in Sasse. The relative says a number of police reports have been filed on the sister in question. An official from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force did confirm that a total of two reports had been filed requesting warnings to be sent out, which have been fulfilled. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalford. The increase in criminal activity has left officials expressing the importance of safety movements. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force says the ultimate goal is for persons to keep their hands to themselves. However, citizens are also urged to practice a measure of safety with their belongings. More from Solange Alfred. A crime wave sweeping over the island is the impetus behind the Royal St. Lucia Police Force urging citizens to tread lightly. A high number of armed robberies being perpetrated on unsuspecting victims has left many empty-handed as their personal belongings have been stolen from their very hands. Press Relations Officer of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Corporal Anne Joseph, issues useful advice to citizens to safeguard themselves to detail from being seen as easy targets. We always encourage persons to make themselves hard targets, for example, not displaying your valuables in places that are clearly visible to, to um, criminal elements, securing your buildings, like placing extra security measures such as cameras, a security guard, um, burglar bars. Moreover, Joseph says more important than citizens keeping themselves from being targets is would-be criminals refraining from engaging in theft and putting individuals' lives at risk. I think the more prudent thing is to encourage persons to keep their hands to themselves and know that if it is not yours, you didn't work for it, you should not try to get it. But again, I encourage still saying that you need to secure yourself, your business, your family. On Saturday, 29th June, the island recorded its 19th homicide when armed bandits stormed a place of business in Sufre, shot and killed the co-owner of the establishment and made away with an unknown sum of cash. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalford.
A taxi driver is recounting the moment when his life was threatened after asking a driver to remove his vehicle from the center of the road and allow him to pass. Omar Fosua says perhaps what is equally upsetting following his ordeal is the way in which the police handled the matter. The Bokash resident says he was on his way to visit a friend with his wife when the incident occurred. I was going to Abdomon therefore by Hot FM there, that's where I was going. So I find a car park on the road and I ask the fella to give me some room to pass because he's in a blind corner and there's a vehicle park on the left, the vehicle park on the right. So I ask some room to pass. Then the fella start getting on with me. I say, since that is a blind corner, so give me some room for me to pass. The man threatened me and telling me he ain't seen nothing to do than take off my head on my body. So from there, I go, they give me some space to pass, I pass, I went to the Marshall Police Station. When I reach there to make a report, the police tell me they are not in charge of therefore I have to go central. Mm. So I had to go central. But when I reach central, I stay there for a little while, but I get assist from the police from central. Right, so so they've been there. When I reach there, the fellas had already go, you know, because they feel, well, probably the, the thing they tell me that I'm going to look for police for them. So probably they leave after I left. Francois says he doesn't understand why he was sent away by the first set of police as they all have the same job to protect and serve. I'm applying to the commission, I want to know what kind of law we have in St. Lucia. For I went to a police station, a near police station where something, somebody threatened me. I went to the near police station and make a report and telling me they are not in charge of the Policeman is the security for the country and the policeman is supposed to be everywhere. With you, anything that happened to you, go to a police, a police supposed to be assisting you. I don't feel that they should send me to Central, right, when Masha is just there to, to, to there for. And I don't feel that is right. Additionally, Francois said the men in question were definitely in the wrong as they were working in a poorly chosen spot. The ACP EU Migration Action on Tuesday, June 26th, handed over a technical assistance project in support of the reintegration of involuntary returning migrants during a brief ceremony at the Ministry of Health conference room in Castries. The Department of Home Affairs and National Security presided over the ceremony as well as the year-long project. The technical assistance, which commenced in June 2018, comes against the backdrop of a need for addressing identified gaps in dealing with the returnee segment of the population. Among the concerns cited was the stigma and discrimination attached to the term deportees and the fact that there is minimal systematization of services that will specifically assist those who arrive on island in a vulnerable state. The project consisted of the commissioning of a baseline survey, validation workshop and the development of a case management system and database on readmission and reintegration of environmental voluntary returning migrants. The ACP EU Migration Act is desirous that the technical assistance will pave the way for the adoption of the proposed national policy and action plan. Addressing the ceremony was Program Officer for the Caribbean ACP EU Migration Action, Mr. Jermaine Grant. He lauded St. Lucia for being the first country in the sub-region to partner with the ACP EU Migration Action to seek to address the issues that evolve around the readmission and reintegration of involuntary returned migrants. Permanent Secretary within the Department of Home Affairs and National Security, Mrs. Elizabeth Bailey, noted that the technical assistance intervention has provided great enlightenment about the challenges faced by returnees. The profile of St. Lucians returning to the island illustrate that 77% were deported for immigration-related offenses such as overstaying and irregular entry, 17% for minor crimes and 6% for major crimes. By far, the main territory of readmission of St. Lucian migrants is Martinique, with 440 locals returned between 2015 during the same period of 2015 to 2018 122 st lucians were returned from canada five from france metropolis 23 from the uk 47 from the u.s two from venezuela and 60 from within the caribbean region reporting for hot 7 news i'm rochelle gonzalez this is the hot 7 nightly news stay with us we'll be right back